Say goodbye to your credit card rewards. Big box retailers, led by Walmart and Target, are pushing for a bill in Congress to take away your hard-earned cash back and travel points to line their pockets. Senate Bill 1838 would enact harmful credit card routing mandates that would end credit card rewards as we know it. If you love your credit card rewards, visit handsoffmyrewards.com and tell them to oppose credit card routing legislation paid for by the Electronic Payments Coalition. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, that means you're basically like a VIP member and you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get Or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get um First dibs on signing up for a live show. You get episodes with no commercials. You get our video because our video is no longer available on YouTube. It is only on Patreon. And the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows, but also bonus episodes each month. But if you're on a Patreon, you're VIP, you're going to get more. Because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. (laughs) This is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. In order to hear the full content, it's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show did. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. Thirsty Thursday. I love it. Full episode. And this is going to be the episode you hear Um, after New Year's or after Christmas? Let's see. After New Year's. So happy New Year's. Happy New Year. Year. Oh yeah. New Year's. No. (laughs) Ever, Ever since I lived with somebody who was very particular about pronunciations and 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 grammar (laughs) she hates this podcast it's never new year's it's just (laughs) one new year so psa it's happy new year not happy new years well i want to have multiple happy new years well i want to say it in plural casey (laughs) if you do you're fired (laughs) happy new year that doesn't sound right Happy, yeah, happy new, new year. Happy, happy new, new year. year. It's a new year. It's not multiple. Okay. It's not more than one year. Happy new year to all of you bloody happy hour fans. <laughs> if you're brand new to us, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is April. And I'm Caroline. And we are just a true crime podcast. And, you know, we are self-proclaimed to be funny. Is it proclaimed? Oh, yeah. We are self-proclaimed um, comedians. Com- comedians. Uh, we go. We always give you the facts. Um, we do I never conspiracy th- conspiratize <laughs> conspiratize and I have great vocabulary. <laughs> we never stumble on our words. But while we do this, we drink a little bit of alcohol and mm-hmm. we just treat it like it's happy hour. So if you are a drinker, pop open a beverage and join us. Cause today we are going to Phoenix, Arizona once again. Okay. So go back in your old long-term retrieval, Caroline. And do you remember my Phoenix serial shooter story two weeks ago? The last story that I did, right? And remember, during that story, we talked about there were two active serial killers in Phoenix at the same time, working, killing at the same time yes so one night it would be news about the phoenix serial shooter and another night it'd be news about the baseline killer yeah so i introduced the baseline killer so just because i wanted to know more i had to do the story yeah so his name is mark godot 
So let's learn about Mark Godot. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So he was, we don't have much about his childhood, but I think there's some red flags. See if you can find any. Okay. So Mark Godot was born in 1964 in Phoenix, Arizona. Red flag. And he had (laughs) 13 siblings. Oh, no. Total. His mother was a maid, and his father was a parking attendant. There was verbal and physical abuse in the household. And dad was, you know, like a part-time dad, in and out of the house. So he'd be there for a week, and then gone for a month, and then in there for a week. And it's like every time he came home, he got his wife pregnant, and she had another kid, and then he left. Mm -mm. Um, At an early age, Mark lost his mom. His mom died at 11 years old. So the older siblings who lived in the house had to take care of the younger siblings. Mm -hmm. And they were still kids, too. So they turned to some crime to get by. So maybe they stole to get groceries or robbed to get money or whatever it may be because they were pretty desperate. And then a lot of his siblings eventually turned to drugs and alcohol to cope with this amazing life that they had. So totally normal sounds so far. So at 11 years old, like he already had not really had a childhood, but by 11, he had to totally grow up. So his childhood was basically nothing. Now, when he became teenagers, him and his brother went to live with an older sister in Tempe, Arizona. And about age 18, like, it sounds like this could have been a turning point in his life for the good because he went to high school there. He was a good athlete and he played football and he was a good looking boy. So girls were interested in him. So him and his brother decided to invite one of these girls over. Mm. And she came willingly. Yeah. And her... And the two brothers went in the room. And we don't really know what happened after that. All we know is the next day she reported a rape. And it was investigated, but not very long, because she withdrew her allegation and moved out of state. Hmm. So whether she lied, did something, regretted it, and lied, or it really happened and she was just scared to face her rape, Rapers, rapists, yeah, rapists, yeah. It's um, she dropped the charges. So, but by that time they're eighteen years old, and it was all over town that they were rapists, all over the school. So they ended up quitting school, and so Mark had to get random jobs at a young age. Because he was no longer in school. So you got to get a job, right? Yeah. He started binge drinking alcohol and eventually began smoking crack. It's, it said crack cocaine, but you can't smoke cocaine, right? You I think snort crack cocaine, cocaine is um, like the cheap. It version. is a thing. Yeah. Like it's a. Yes. Okay. But he also sniffed cocaine later on. Yeah. So I don't know which one well, this is. I think crack cocaine is like rocks Uh huh. and cocaine is powder. Okay, well, so you have to smoke it with that, with the pipe spoon or something. Uh-huh. I don't know. I mean, I, that's just what I see. Or you can j- shoot it up. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah, they shoot up crack in their arms. I think. Yeah, I guess. So he eventually started smoking crack cocaine, but he was doing this very quietly, so nobody really knew that he had a. He was doing this. Him and the drug dealers knew this, so he did it very quietly. I guess. Um. Right when he found a steady job, he met a woman named Wendy. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Remember her because she's going to be throughout the story. She found a job in construction. Or he found a job in construction. He was very good at it. He was making decent money. And he fell in love with Wendy. And this could have been another turning point in his life because they dated. They went horseback riding. They ended up getting an apartment and living together. Mm Mm-hmm. She had no idea that he was still doing crack on the down low. Like, he could just hide it very well. Mm. So, maybe he was a functioning crack mm. addict. I don't... I don't could be. Can crack do that? Can you be functional on crack? I don't know. But on August 9th, 1989, Wendy, girlfriend Wendy, left home. 
<clears throat> and he had a little girl that he met named Betty kind of on the side. So Wendy left. He called Betty over to come hang out. And they hung out. Bader, Betty letter said that Mark sniffed a line of cocaine. And after he did that, his eyes got dark. And he tried to force her to sniff cocaine. He tried to force her head down on the table. He tried to force it up her nose. She refused. He then beat her and raped her and then bludgeoned her with some dumbbells. Oh, no. Because she wouldn't take cocaine? The cocaine, rea- get, he did not have a good reaction from the cocaine. He did not have a good reaction. some bad coke. <laughs> But she was still conscious after being bludgeoned with the barbell and after being beat and raped. And when he noticed this, he drug her to his own bathtub, ran the water, and attempted to drown her. But Betty was a fighter. She fought and she fought and she ended up getting away. <gasps> she ran out of the after apartment. After being hit with the dumbbell? I know. I know. Oh, Betty shit. was a badass. I mean, it hurts We're going to call her Badass Betty. Badass Betty. Because... Betty lives. She runs out of the parking lot, and this is an apartment complex. He's chasing her, and now with a rifle. But it must not be loaded because he's attempting to beat her with the butt of a rifle, okay? Or a shotgun. I don't know the difference. I don't either. Um, Sounds the same. Neighbors hear her screaming because it's an apartment complex. Yeah. They look out the window, and they saw something, and they said something. Oh, you're always supposed to see something and say something. (laughs) I'm so proud. So they sounded the alarm, I read. So the only thing I think of is those little red lovers. Like Beyonce, they sound the alarm. Good job. And the uh, complex. So the alarm started going off. The police came. But by the time the police came, Omar Godot was gone. Mm. What's his name? Mark Godot. Oh. Mark Godot. Godot. Mark Godot. Not Omar. Okay. And now a word from our sponsors. Say goodbye to your credit card rewards. Big box retailers led by Walmart and Target are pushing for a bill in Congress to take away your hard-earned cash back and travel points to line their pockets. Senate Bill 1838 would enact harmful credit card routing mandates that would end credit card rewards as we know it. If you love your credit card rewards, visit handsoffmyrewards.com and tell them to oppose credit card routing legislation paid for by the Electronic Payments Coalition. Betty woke up in the hospital three days later. Oh, no. She was able to give Mark's name, description, and address because she was at the house. Duh! Way to go, Betty. And Badass podcast. Betty. Podcast <laughs> over. Your, Good your... game. <laughs> um, so they go there and they arrest him. Well, they're t- questioning him. And Mark was like, wait. Badass Betty must be mistaken because that's not what happened at all. We were having a great time. There was no cocaine involved. Never mind this powder on my table. No, no, that's never mind this dust. powder on my face, <laughs> under my nose. Um, he said they had a great time, but suddenly two men busted in his door. And those two men did all that to Betty, not Betty. Those two men raped her try to drown her in his bathtub, beat her with the dumbbell, and she took off, and he was only running after her to make sure she was okay. Yeah, I mean... Mark was the hero of the story, it sounds like. Clearly. Mark's version. Betty, what are you talking about? Betty, get it together. (laughs) Jeez. Um, Acting like a victim. So he was like, it was just these two random men. For some reason, he was allowed to plead no contest to the aggravated assaults, and was allowed probation. But he still had to face trial or charges for the kidnapping and rape charge. Okay? He So he was free. He was on probation at this time. But he knew that, like, he would soon have to go to trial for this other charges for Betty. So he was really doing a bunch of drugs. Mm. Uh, just kind of desperate. On August 10th, in 1990, so it's about a year-ish later, he was, um, and all, he does a whole lot in August. 
He was he got real busy. out of money. And so one of his good friends told him an easy way to make money. He said, all you got to do is get a gun and go to a fast food restaurant or supermarket and rob them at gunpoint. Tell them to put the money in a brown paper bag and you got free money. So Mark was like, bet, good idea. So he went to free money. Great. a local fast food restaurant, held the gun on the person. They took all the money out of the drawer. He had $500 in a brown paper bag. Wow. You go. What are you going to buy? But, you know, Mark wasn't very smart because he didn't put on a mask and he drove his own personal vehicle to go rob this store and witnesses That's what happens saw when you're on drugs and his vehicle clearly so this police go back to mark's house they had just visited him a year before for betty's stuff so they go to his house and um they're like hey there was a robbery right down the road mm. they just happened to see a brown paper bag Sitting in his living room with five hundred dollars in it. Wow! How did they get there? Somebody must have put it there. It was those same people. I think those two I men. Think came those back. two men came back. I wish he would have thought of that. That would have been a great addition to the story. Yeah. So a year later, he was charged for that, and a year later, he faced court for both incidents: the robbery and the kidnapping of Betty. And he was sentenced to fifteen years for Betty, the kidnapping and the rape, and twenty-one years for the robbery. Seems so backwards. <laughs> this is Betty, America. Your life, your life, your really life matters. Is really didn't matter. It's all about <laughs> the convenience. The five hundred dollars. It's crazy. Do these people not know what it means to be raped? <sighs> like, do you not? Do you need to see do a they bit? Need like, to, I don't. I understand. don't know. I mean, it's just like that's the. So, and he also had the possibility of parole. <clears throat> so he went to prison and of course he's a stellar prisoner he gets help like um drug help oh yeah i mean prison rehab him and wendy get married because you know wendy believes his story about these two men and he wendy wendy's girlfriend that he lives with oh shit okay yeah we're gonna call her weak wendy <laughs> Weak Wendy, badass Betty is who we have so far. So Weak Wendy marries him. So he's getting all the conjugals he wants. He gets out of prison in 2004 because his parole hearing was just very blunt and honest. I I was on drugs back then. I was not in my right mind. I had a horrible childhood. I am ashamed of that person. I am renewed. Oh. I'm brand new. Yeah, you found Jesus in prison, like everybody does. He did 18 years total and got out 18 years. So it's 2004, and he's out. And for the first year, Mark Godot is a great guy. I bet he is. He's at home with his loving Community wife. Community service, going he to has church. A steady income. He's a pastor. He damn near. <laughs> he has these great friendships. He did not even get like a parking ticket or a speeding ticket. Well, good for you. Within the first year. Wow. But you know, he had some urges, and those I urges, mean, they just a don't little go away. coke here, a little coke there. What's it going to hurt? Well, he had different type of urges. <laughs> About a, a little year, gay sex here, a little gay <laughs> sex there. <laughs> About a year after he got out, so it's like August 6th again, it's 2005. You know, he decided to go for a walk. But he needed a gun on this walk. Oh, yeah. He had to be protected. And he approached three teenagers, two teenage girls and one teenage boys. We don't know their name because they were all underage. He held his gun on them, led them down a dark alley. He assaulted the two girls while he had the boy at gunpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. He assaulted, meaning he like hit them? Well, sexually assaulted. He was raping one girl while the other two were at gunpoint, and then he raped the other girl How while he had you... the boy at gunpoint. Is there multiple of them? Of the teenagers? No, of him? Nope. It's just Mark. So he it's one against three. One against three. And, and they're somehow kids. he manages to rape one while and the other two just okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now when he was done 
raping. He had his towel in his pocket and he got out a towel and he wiped up his DNA <laughs> off the girls mm. and he left in the dark. Oh my God. This was like a pit bull with blood because this would start a rampage. <sighs> One month later, he struck again and he approached a woman. Um, she screamed and he shot her dead. This was a 19-year-old girl named Georgia Thompson. She was in the parking lot of her apartment. She was found with her pants down and unbuttoned, but no signs of rape. So when the police investigated this, they were like, all her prized possessions are on her, so this is not a robbery. Oh my God. This has to just be stone-cold murder. So he's raped t- two hurt people at gunpoint and now he just shot a woman at gunpoint 12 days after that he approached two sisters and one of them was pregnant they were walking home from the park after getting a walk-in he took them into some bushes he held them at gunpoint and then he held the gun on the pregnant woman's (coughs) belly while he raped the other girl but here his one hand with a gun. He's trying to put on a condom with one hand, and he can't do it. So he puts down his gun to put the condom on. And they see that, and they try to lunge for the gun, but he's too quick. His thingling's out. You can punch him or, like, <laughs> kick him or something. Kick him or twist it or bite it. I don't know. Um, I, they were also underage, so I never saw their names. A lot of these, if they're underage, they Mm -hmm. won't report like their names. Mark was too quick. He got the gun, held it to the pregnant lady's head and stomach, like back and forth and said, you better beg for you and your kid's life. Oh my. Um, but he didn't shoot either of them. He finished raping the sister, but before he left, he was pretty clever. He told both sisters to spit in his hand. So sister one spit, sister two spit. Then he grabbed dirt and he put it in the spit and he rubbed it together and he rubbed it all over the body of the woman, that the sister that he raped. So where he was licking all over her, like on her chest, he wiped that off and rubbed their spit on him. On Ooh, her. Licking on their chest. He was raping her raping them so i guess he wanted to do all of it so it was kind of clever i thought well i thought he was dumb in the beginning but he seems to get a little bit smarter so they spit in their hand he rubbed it with the dirt on the chest they went to the police police got two dna swabs one was unusable because it had all the dirt in there but the other one they didn't even run at all they just stored both samples in the police department and was like, okay, peace out. Be on your way. No. <laughs> what? This will come back up later too. Ugh, police department crooked. Jeez, so, the wheel. but because they're alive, they were able to describe their attacker and they got a composite done, but then you still never even saw this composite anywhere. Like you didn't see it like on the news. They didn't like paste it on telephone poles. They didn't do anything. <laughs> Nobody had it on the dashboard. Like, what the hell? No. So he accelerated even more, but now he started to wear a wig of dreadlocks and a fisherman hat. Oh. If you don't remember in the first episode, this is a black serial killer. All of his, um, and I'm going to show you his picture, all of his- Victims are white? Are not black. So they're white, they're Hispanic, they're women. I think there's one boy- not black look at this serial killer we're gonna post this picture he's not bad looking most serial killers no are yeah looking. no he's he's like good a, looking he's he, like light-skinned a little bit yeah he's very light-skinned like if you look at his body he's like an average looking person yeah yeah that would be able to get laid on his that own. would be a, yes exactly <laughs> that's what, but it's like Oh, now weak Wendy. This is why this is a okay. And how old are these people he's raping? They're like, they're all been underage so far. What is what is it about? And I think it's just everywhere. It is everywhere. Just 
with little girls and raping like well it's, or like young one like there's just oh it's just but crazy. i don't even I, think I don't he's even going he's just an opportunist because they just happen to be teenagers but he's about to cross some different age lines he's going to go into the upper 30s 35 36 37 38 39 so he he wasn't even looking for a particular type no, of woman just, he was just looking for a woman which is weird um his weak Wendy, his wife, was a redhead woman. Oh, your and I was favorite. Like, you make all redheads look bad, weak Wendy. No, I, she can't ruin it for everybody. Okay. It's fine. I mean, We're if she had a cat that. and was from Utah and was a nurse, <laughs> eh, could be a different story. <laughs> okay, so he accelerated even more, but now he's like, I'm just going to wear a disguise. He puts on some dreadlocks and a fishing hat to disguise himself. Okay. Um, by the end of that September, he robs a fast food restaurant, kidnaps a woman and her 12 year old daughter, rapes both of them and lets them go. You know, he has these different type of urges on November 3rd. He had robbery and sexual assault all within two. I mean, 10 minutes at two different places. So. He robbed a restaurant at 8.01 p.m. No. Yes, at 8.01 p.m. And by 8.10 p.m., he got a woman and that was placing her items in a donation, like a Goodwill receptacle, right? Grabbed her. While she was by her car, made him drive her down, made her drive him down the road, sexually assaulted her in her car and left, Jen then just left. He wore a Halloween costume and black plastic glasses at this time. What? So he had robbed a place, got $720 <laughs> at gunpoint, and then with his fisherman's hat, Switched into another disguise and then kidnapped that lady in her own car, raped her at gunpoint, and then left. So, so two within 10 minutes. Huh? He's a what? Tranny. <laughs> He's got a lot of issues. Oh, she's real different. Um, couple days later, on November 7th, um, he holds some P pe four people at gunpoint and it's crazy that, so he was, if you look at his body type, like he's big and he's built. Uh -huh. So this must be why these people are not like challenging him because here's four people at gunpoint at a Mexican restaurant, robs them. He went next door to the little Caesars restaurant, robbed three people inside of there. What? Why are three he not people caught? on the outside, four people on the inside, and got four hundred and sixty-three dollars total from this. When people were trying to approach him to maybe be the hero, go after him, he shot the gun up in the air and took off running. So by the po time the police got there, there was only a bullet casing in the parking lot. No sign of this assailant in dreadlocks. So he's a runner. He's a track star. <laughs> he is. <laughs> By this time, he had killed one woman, assaulted four others, and committed tons of robberies. He was doing this all for either drug money. The robberies were for drug money. And then he needed the sex and the power from the rapes. And this is when they named him the baseline rapist because baseline was like the main road that all these things mm. were happening off of. Yeah. So it would be like our, your main street or like your Valley Mills drive. And so all of them happened like right off that yeah. main street. Yeah. So now back at home, you know, Mark, he was considered a very gentle man. He was hardworking. His friends and neighbors just loved and trusted him. Um, they never suspected him of doing any of this. He was often seen in his yard because very meticulous about his yard and his yard work. And he was always the first one to speak and wave to the neighbors. 
Oh, how and initiate conversation. Good guy. He was a God fearing man. Okay. He brought his wife flowers weekly and refused to let her watch any violence on TV, even the news. Oh, shocking. This is why Weak Wendy was so. This is why she was so weak. Yeah. They probably, that probably made him feel invincible that like nobody, all this stuff was going on and nobody even knew that he was even capable of doing anything like this. Um, in December, he, a man was working in his warehouse. He hears two loud gunshots from outside. And he was thinking, oh, these are teenage kids. Let me go shoo them off, like playing around, playing target practice. He looked out and he saw a man, a hooded man, standing over a woman's body. The hooded man saw him, turned his pistol on just this random guy, pulled the trigger, but his gun jammed up. Good. So the guy ran back in, closed the door to his warehouse, and the handle was jiggling because the assailant, Mark, was trying to get in. Oh, that's the worst. After a while, the jiggling stopped. He called the police. When the police came, there was a body of a 39-year-old woman named Tina Washington. Oh. She was shot in the back of the head. Her jewelry was missing. Her pants were unbuttoned and down, but no signs of sexual assault. Okay. So it's like he wants to. Ra- this is how what I'm thinking. Does he want to rape these women, but they're fighting too much, so he has to kill them, and then after he kills them, he can't rape them because he's not a. He's not Ted Bundy. A necrophiliac. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's not Jeffrey Dahmer. Or is he attempting to get off, but then he can't because it's a dead body, so he just gives up on it after they're dead. Mm, probably. So that was in December, and then there was a cooling off period, oh. and nothing happens December. You know, you got a bunch of, probably had office parties and yeah, had to buy presents. There's a lot going on there, so like everybody's doing things. New and... Year's, probably going to a couple balls. Yeah, New Year's. And nothing happens until, oh yeah, <laughs> February. <laughs> and on February 27th, pop it open, pop it open. 2006, there were two more homicides. Oh, gosh. The bodies of 38-year-olds, so you see how the Yes, he's ages going up. Now he's going up to the grandmas. 38 years old, Romelia Vargas. That means we're grandmas. I know. That's exactly why I said that, because I'm 38. And 34-year-old Myrna Roman were found shot to death inside their snack truck. Um, oh, they were just trying to sell snacks. Yeah. Their pants were unbuttoned and down, but no signs of sexual assault. Their money from their truck was missing. See? See? It's like, why is he pulling their pants down? He's not assaulting them. He's just putting their pants down to make them maybe uh, vulnerable and to where they can't really move because their pants are down. I don't know. So maybe he, but he starts off maybe as a rapist. he is the one who traveled to San Antonio, San Antonio and, got and got Savannah Matthew. and Matthew. Hey, gunshots, pants unbuttoned and down fits the fits the crime. Yep, fits the mo. Um, <coughs> police did not link these to the baseline rapist yet or killer because they thought this was like drug related. Mm-hmm. That was February. Two more things happened in March. This was a double homicide. These were two employees of the Yoshi restaurant. Liliana Cabrera, she was 20. She was found dead in the parking lot of the fast food. And then Chow Chu, who worked at the Yoshi restaurant, was discovered about a mile away. Both of them were shot in the head. Pants were unbuttoned, but no signs of sexual assault. Mm. I believe Chow Chu was a boy, and I think this is the only male. Chow Chu. Chow Chu. Interesting. In the end of March, there was another body that was discovered. Um, A guy, local businessman, noticed streaks of blood in the gravel. as his parking lot. He was walking to his car, and then there's blood streaks in the gravel. 
He did not follow it. Good guy. Good job. But he did call the police. And police see the streaks. They see the blood. But it led to not a body. And so they left. And then a week later, another call comes in because there's a bad smell. And then a decomposed body of Kristen Nicole Gibbons was found. She had been shot in the head. The streaks of blood belonged to her. So Mark had drug her body to another location after he killed her, shot her. Now, Mark was living this double life, as most of our serial killers do. Um, But not everybody bought his lies. Somebody saw through him, and this lady's name was Sophia Nunez. Mark was out, and he was trying to spit game at Sophia. He talked, you know, about what a great person he is, how what his great yard and his great job and, you know, showed his muscles. And she called red flag after red flag after red flag. She thought he was a bullshitter. Mm-hmm. So she walked away from him and this pissed off Mark. They don't like rejection. He called her 300 times over the next three months. Oh, my gosh. With no response. She didn't call back. She didn't do anything. And then they accidentally ran into each other at an arcade, and she was with her son. They had a polite conversation, because Sophia's not a bitch. She just was not interested in him. Polite conversation, and she remembered that he did odd handy jobs, and she was a single mom, so she was like, I need a couple things. Can you come and fix this and fix this and fix this? So Mark was like, oh, yeah, here's my chance, okay? Well, she was even smarter. She hired him to come fix these things, but she made sure he was fixing them when she was not at home. So she arranged for him to come at this time. Mm -hmm. It's all on the outside of her house. She was not going to be at home. So this pissed him off, and he left without doing the jobs, right? And she was like, oh, yeah, he's done with me now. I guess I never have to Mm -hmm. worry about him anymore. But she was wrong. Because on April 10th, 2006, her neighbor came over to return a lawnmower, lawnmower, but saw a different truck parked in her driveway. So neighbor was like, oh, I'm not going to disturb her. She has a guest. I'll return it later on. Mm -hmm. Later that afternoon, Sophia's son had to walk home alone. I think he was like seven or eight. Had to walk home alone because his mama... Sophia did not meet him at his school to pick him up. So he walked home, knocked on the door. Mama didn't answer. He had to crawl under the garage door, walked into the house, called for his mom, and no answer. But he heard water running in the bathroom. He went in the bathroom. The bathroom was full of water, and his mom was in the bathtub. She had been shot under her no! eye. Oh, she was shit. dead in the face under one eye. So that Sophia saw the red flags, tried to avoid them, and still got killed by them. Little boy tried, her son tried to wake her up, tried to wake her up, and then went outside. Him and the neighbor had to call the police. The neighbor that was going to return the lawnmower had to call the police. No. All they had was a bullet wound, and they sent that in for analysis. This happened, a sexual assault happened in May. Um, I mean, God, this guy is everywhere. He is everywhere. And remember, this is now hitting the news, because now we have baseline rapist that's evolved to the baseline killer also in the news is the phoenix serial shooters so remember the phoenix Mm -hmm. serial shooters were watching what this guy was doing and was trying to match crimes for crimes yeah and they were both shooting random people in phoenix so it just has to be a scary time this guy is going after women but there's still just random women that he sees that just may be alone or vulnerable Police matched all these bullets from all these crime scenes and see that they'd belong to uh, belong to a thirty eight pistol. 
Okay. They don't have a person, but they now they have a type of gun. And now we have a baseline killer. And so the police went public on May 5th, 2006. Those sketches that they've had for months are now being put out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have linked him to at least 18 crimes. Oh this baseline killer God. to at least 18 crimes. Um, so he lays low for a little bit. But he can't contain himself anymore. It's been about two months since he last struck. So his last thing was on May 1st. And now it's June 29th, 2006. Carmen Miranda, 37 years old, was abducted from her car wash. She was washing her car, a self-serve car wash, washing her car while she was on the boyfriend, on their phone with her boyfriend, talking and chatting with her boyfriend, right? Mm. Um, Her boyfriend heard a man approach. He asked her something. Then he heard Carmen scream and the phone dropped and he didn't hear anything else. So boyfriend hung up the phone, called the police, called Miranda's son, and when they got to the car wash, Miranda and her car were gone. Oh, shit. They looked in the area for two hours and found her car in a nearby parking lot. She was inside with a gunshot wound to the head. Ugh. She was parked behind a barber shop. Now, this attack was captured on CCTV. Good. The car wash has video. So this would be the last crime attributed to the baseline killer. That footage Idiot. was all over the news everywhere. Okay, so here's the sketch. Good. Here's the footage of his body and his face and Badass Betty comes forward again. Remember oh, Badass yes. Betty from the beginning? Yes. Come on, Betty. So Betty was like, that's Mark <coughs> Goodo. The man who raped and bludgeoned me, he did prison time. That is him. I know his face. I know his body. I have seen that before I've gone to sleep every night since. So they're like, you know what? Mark Godot's a God-fearing man. I don't know if he's capable of this. Look at his yard. It's meticulous. <laughs> oh, so is BTK's. <laughs> he he has a steady construction job, and he's, mm. I mean, his wife is so devoted to him. What mm. do you know about this? So like BTK. So they mm. put surveillance on him. And, oh, you know that DNA that they had from mm. the twin, from mm-hmm. the sisters, the pregnant sisters? They decide... Oh, they should probably run it. Yeah, they should oh, probably that's run a good it. Good idea. Way to go. And it matched. <laughs> well, and they also had. Uh, so then it was a match to Mark because every person that gets out of prison has to give a DNA sample upon release. Did you know that? No. I don't know if that's even still a thing, but before it was. So the DNA was a exact match to Mark Godot. Because it matched his DNA from when he was released in prison just two years earlier. So he did all this in one year because the first year, remember, he was an angel. Oh, yeah. The second yeah. year, he was going crazy. Um, so he could have been stopped nine months ago if they would have just actually ran I mean, the yeah. DNA. Well, why would they do that? Their job. So now they have their baseline killer. So on September 6, 2006, it was Mark Godot's birthday. And he was just all excited. He was getting off of work. And he was going home. And his wife, Wendy, was going to take him out to eat for dinner. And they were going to just celebrate his birthday. But instead, he was arrested in his home in front of his wife and his neighbors, who all thought he was so innocent. Now, he was charged with 74 freaking crimes. Wow. Nine counts of first-degree murder, five counts of sexual assault, three counts of attempted sexual assault, 10 counts of kidnapping, 12 armed robberies, four counts of attempted armed robberies, three counts of sexual abuse, nine of sexual misconduct, 13 aggravated assault, Three of indecent exposure, tons and tons and tons. 
Tons and tons and tons. He was found guilty of 67 of those felony accounts. Wow. Including oh. all the murders that they attributed to the baseline killer, which was nine. So on November 30th, 2011, he was sentenced to death nine times. <laughs> nine times. What a dumbass. Uh, for total, okay, here it is. Nine times and 1,196 years for 58 of the crimes, whilst also serving a 438-year sentence after being convicted for 19 separate crimes and rape. So a total of 1,634 years. <laughs> Why is this guy not known more? Because he's an idiot and I hate him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. The families of the victims launched lawsuits against the Phoenix Police Department. What do you think? As they should. Oh, well, probably because they didn't follow the up on the DNA and all this bullshit. And they had composite and they had DNA. And they did nine Dang. months before he was caught. So th- how many lives would that have saved how many sexual assaults would that have saved had they done that done Mm -hmm. that the supreme court ruled that the police department was not liable oh good so they didn't win their case oh great now godot's wife weak windy car (laughs) weak windy told the press the uh, police arrested the wrong man man. my husband is innocent this is quotes (laughs) This is a huge miscarriage of justice, and they have an innocent man in prison. This is all a mistake. <clears throat> he shouldn't be in prison for something he did not do. This bitch. He was loving and an exceptionally friendly neighbor who took meticulous care of his lawn. Friends and family deny any possibility that Godot could be the baseline killer, saying that he was framed by the Phoenix Police Department who was very desperate for a suspect. And he was in prison because he fit the description of a well-built black man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No. It sounds like our other <laughs> serial killer. Oh, who was that? I can't even remember. The first black serial killer we did when everybody was like a good-looking, well-built black, black man. man. <laughs> <laughs> um, that lived in the area of the murders. Wendy even launched a blog about his innocence. Wendy, <laughs> just stop. Wendy, just stop and just. She, some for some reason, stopped updating the blog oh. after 2014. Well, probably because you realize that he is a rapist and a douchebag and a murderer. Ugh. And bye. At least he wore condoms, so he wasn't bringing Oh, well, good. Yeah, I'm proud of him. In October 2015, Godot appealed his nine death sentences. <coughs> his nine death sentences. Um, oh. Saying that he should have been tried separately for each of the murders um, and some of the other counts. But in June of 2016, the Arizona Supreme Court said, screw you. <laughs> oh, good. You're guilty. Like, he did not get his appeal. There is a video up th- out there of Godot um, basically saying... He's innocent, why he's innocent, and he just sounds like one of these narcissist men that could never do no wrong. He had no remorse, never apologized, because, you know, he's innocent. I mean, so yeah. what would he apologize for? Nothing. He's innocent. He didn't do anything. <sighs> and there's the baseline serial Wow, killers. that was a good one. <laughs> I've never heard of it, and I loved it. Why, that was great. I, it, so it has to be Phoenix... Their mouth ought to be watering because these are their two biggest cases that they've had there. And I don't know why he's not bigger, but I, it's like I always think, like, when you just shoot somebody, yeah, it's just not as interesting as, like, when you chop them up and eat them or cook them. Or yeah, or something. then, like, put them in the forest and go put makeup on them and yeah, fix their hair yeah, and then, yeah. like. Do them after they're dead, like this. And then, like we like a, re- or I like a true psycho. Not saying that he wasn't, but 
He just he did, did it for pro- like he for just fun. did a drug. Yeah. Yeah, and drugs. Drugs yeah. induced and then it's like, oh, so you were you really psycho? Obviously he was, but Yeah. Anyways, there you go. There you love go. Love it. Love it. Love it. Great story. And that's it. That's it. And I'm just shocked that he could get Poontang on his own. Like he was he's just not bad looking, but I guess Ted Bundy could have too. True. I guess you get urges. Uh, power and control. Wanted to overpower, and Wendy couldn't do that. She probably was missionary position only. Missionary only. Missionary <laughs> only. He was a little bored. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, y'all. We will see y'all next week for a whole new episode. Whole new quickie. And Happy New Year. Happy Don't for- New Year. New. Everybody. Happy New, new Year. New Year. Nuevo años. Sure. On yo, uh, 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 in Spanish they say. Okay, Años. well you can say it in Spanish, <laughs> but you can't say it in English. Okay, don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. And if your husband is meticulous in the yard, it's a great neighbor. <laughs> brings you flowers. I just described Sweet Pea. Oh, Sweet Pea, and, zi- and he has zip ties. <laughs> We're out of here. Bye, Bye y'all. <laughs> Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By the the Cover Cover Podcast. Podcast. (laughs) We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure. For (laughs) sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok. So don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. We are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You you just kept going. I'm going to introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it It's because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com. Hey, I'm Katie. And I'm Summer. And this is Monsters in the Attic. So we thought we'd bring people on. Yeah. It's very real, and we're fortunate to have a lot of friends who have a lot of monsters, and we can't wait to share them with you. I love that, that we're so fortunate that we have so many friends with so many monsters. Where can people find us? Facebook, Instagram, and everywhere they listen to their favorite podcast. They can find me at my therapist office. As they should. <laughs> This has been a Rogue Media Network production.